To learn more, contact an Amway independent business owner. of Namie lies mostly empty, abandoned in the wake of the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant nearby. But back in March, when the plant began malfunctioning after it was hit by a massive earthquake and tsunami, local residents were moved to a school that was directly in the path of a radiation plume caused by a venting operation. Thousands weren't evacuated from high-risk areas for days. Prime Minister Naoto Kan's government has blamed a failure of the Japanese system to forecast radiation threats. But an Associated Press investigation has found the system itself, set up back in the 1980s, worked just fine. The problem was officials didn't understand it or the data it was generating. Forecast reports put together from information collected at monitoring posts were sent to Japan's nuclear safety agency but never made it to any decision makers, and they didn't understand the significance of the information available enough to ask for it. Namie Mayor Tamotsu Baba is infuriated by the mistakes. It's a lie when the government says it didn't go public with the information on the radiation because it had no idea how much had been released. The communications breakdown that affected Namie may hold lessons for other countries, too, as many similar radiation warning systems are used around the world. In Japan itself, many have been saying the lesson of Fukushima Daiichi ought to be to move away from nuclear power altogether. As the bell tolled in memory of those who died from the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki back in World War II, the current mayor of the city, Tomihi Satawe, made that point. In order to live in a safer society, we ask that the nation works to develop a renewable energy source that replaces nuclear power. But while the energy picture could change in the future, those who used to live in Namie could end up paying for past mistakes. It's still not even clear exactly how much radiation they may have been exposed to, nor whether they may actually suffer any health problems as a result. Karen Sloan, The Associated Press. いわきに住んでいます。小学校 鼻血を出してる子っているあの、保健の先生が鼻血を出している子が多くなっているって言ってましたあ、そうなんだはい学校は楽しいはい、とても楽しいですでも、外で遊ぶ時間が少なくなったのでちょっと辛いです The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has reported a $7.4 billion net loss for a three-month period up to June. This was due to the massive cost of the ongoing nuclear crisis at the crippled power plant. On Tuesday, Tokyo Electric Power Company released its earnings report for the quarter. It says that sales in the period came to about $14.7 billion, a year-on-year -year drop of 7.2 percent, following energy-saving efforts by both companies and households. TEPCO also booked an extraordinary loss over $5 billion to cover compensation for people affected by the Fukushima nuclear accident, including evacuees and farmers. The government is planning to establish a legal entity to help the utility firm pay out damages. At a news conference on Tuesday, TEPCO President Toshio Nishizawa said that once the government entity has been set up, the utility's liabilities are unlikely to exceed its assets. 
Sixty-six years ago, Japan was reeling from the aftermath of Hiroshima's atomic bombing. Then it was hit again. Another nuclear weapon brought widespread death and destruction to Nagasaki. People gathered in the port city on Tuesday to remember that painful morning in 1945. But they also spent time talking about a present-day danger, the crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. NHK World's Keikichi Hanada reports. Mokuto. About 6,000 people joined the ceremony to remember the moment when an atomic bomb destroyed this city and killed tens of thousands of people. Junior high school students from Iwaki in Fukushima Prefecture took part in the memorial service. The March earthquake and tsunami along with the nuclear crisis hit their city hard. 66 years after the destruction of Nagasaki, Japan's triple disaster is creating anxiety among atomic bomb survivors. Tokyo Electric Power Company's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is still not under control. This year, with the accident of the Fukushima nuclear power plant, many people are facing the threat of radiation. I personally promise to use the rest of the time I have for the realization of a peaceful world without nuclear arms, war, and the threat of radiation. The mayor of Nagasaki called for the abolition of atomic weapons, but he also devoted part of his peace declaration to Japan's nuclear crisis. How is it possible that we are threatened once again by the fear of radiation? Have we lost our awe of nature? Have we become overconfident in the control we wield as human beings? Have we turned away from our responsibility for the future? Now is the time to discuss this thoroughly and choose what kind of society we want to create from this point on. Prime Minister Naoto Kan delivered essentially the same speech he gave in Hiroshima three days ago. He insisted Japan's energy policy must be rewritten and he repeated his call for a phase-out of nuclear power. Regarding our country's energy policy, we have started rethinking it from scratch. Regarding nuclear energy, we will deeply reflect over the conventional belief that nuclear energy is safe, thoroughly look into the cause of the accident, and to secure safety, implement fundamental measures while also decreasing the degree of dependence on nuclear power generation to aim for a society that does not rely on nuclear power. That will be easier said than done. Nuclear power is one of the cheapest forms of energy in Japan right now. But as people mark the anniversary of the atomic bombing of Nagasaki, many are asking what must be done to avoid creating more radiation sufferers. The answer will present enormous political and economic challenges. Keikichi Hanada, NHK World, Nagasaki. So there's two points. Uh, firstly, um, a few minutes ago you mentioned that uh, some of the plutonium that has come out of the Fukushima disaster uh, has been uh, detected in the UK, but how do you know? Well, you know from statistics. What you do is you, you look at the concentrations of plutonium in uh, 14 high-volume air samplers deployed around the atomic weapons site at Aldermaston in Berkshire. And you look at the readings over a period of 20, uh, 15 years, and you find that suddenly the, the, the concentration in one of the filters goes up 
very high relative to the average concentration over the period for pre previous 15 years. Um, and that time when it goes up is exactly after the air modelling predicts that any air from the Fukushima site would have appeared in the UK. And so the probability of that occurring by chance is something like 1 in 10 to the minus 19. Minus 19. 10 to the minus 19. This is roughly um, the, the time between 1995 and 2011. And you look at the average concentration of plutonium in all of the filters and it goes like this. Mostly zero, incidentally. Mostly below. But on the zero day, on a yonaka no hekin no do, no aru ti yu kanji de, ju monen kan, this net, and the bit about aru ti skin and water from the day for you, and no koto na no kitishima to, ah, so this kasume na fukushima da shiken kasu ka, and the dikita plutonium shana kasi imasen wara, and wara ti yu yon bai ti yon nai desu. And the second uh, question was that um, there's something to do with uh, accumulation of Krypton 85 in the, um, in the, in the environment. And apparently uh, this is coming out from reprocessing plants, reprocessing factories. Um, and maybe it's going to be uh, sitting around in the, in the environment for 50 or 100 years. Um, the IAEA maybe did a, a study of this in the 70s, um, but what do you think might be the impact of this sort of thing, the Krypton 85 yes. that is? Um, the, uh, when, when these gases were discovered um, a very long time ago, they were components of liquid air. So when you liquidize air, you find these gases, which used to be called rare gases. Um, and then they became called, for some reason, they became called noble gases. And the, con the concentration in, um, of, of krypton-85 in air from about 1952 uh, has gone like this. And at the moment, according to Professor Sawada, who was talking yesterday um, in Asian Wakamatsu, the concentration of Krypton-85 in air is about 2%. I couldn't believe this. But anyway, that's what he said. The problem with this gas is that it's radioactive and it's going to affect the weather. This is really the problem. It's going to affect the weather and it's going to affect the ionization in the uh, stratosphere. So it's a very much a, a gas that affects the ozone layer, and it's a gas which will affect the weather, uh, to say nothing of the fact that it's radioactive and it will kill people. So the, it's a very serious problem, very serious problem. You're quite right to point it out. And as long as nuclear power continues, the concentration of gas, uh, Krypton-85, will continue to go up and up and up and up. And, and uh, which is why another reason why nuclear power is not not a good idea. Hi. Uh, you might be interested that in 1998 I, I was asked to go to uh, this island which is called Alderney, um, which is 12 kilometers from the French re reprocessing site at Cap de la in Normandy. This is a map, this is the sea. This is a little island. And I was asked to go there by somebody who lived there who said everybody was dying from brain tumors. Now, Krypton-85 is produced at Alderney in huge quantities. And it rolls across the sea to Alderney. And all of the trees which are on the coast of, the, of, of, of Alderney uh, are brown on the side facing the, the uh, sea, but green on the other side. And we also we found Krypton-85 in the potatoes that people were eating, so it dissolved in the potatoes. Uh, it's a, the noble gas, it dissolves in um, fat, and so it would be, the concentration in brain, tube, brain tissue, which is very fatty, would be quite high. And we found uh, a very high level of mortality from cancer on, on all the, particularly brain tumors. Um, we, never, we never published this in the literature, but it was a very interesting study. Um, so it fits in with your idea that Krypton-85 is produced in large quantities by reprocessing sites and is also quite dangerous.